Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting segment of Rainbow Colors Let's Talk. My name is Diana Ndimba and I'm all the way from Namibia. The talk show all started with the name Rainbow. Rainbow meaning that we all come from different walks of life, different nationalities, different countries, different di diversities and we come together as one, like one big rainbow, fr rainbow flag. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you this beautiful show just to bring diversity into the, into the university as it is an international university and we all want to come together as one. We'll be talking about agendas happening on the campus as we live our daily lives and trying to settle into this beautiful country of Cyprus. Um, we're also here to learn about more on the Turkish side of the island and all of that. And I thank you for joining us. And today I'm joined by two amazing people. And uh, let me just let them introduce themselves. Who are you? Where are you from? And uh, what are you doing here? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Diana. Uh, my name is Tafari Harris Matimba. Uh, okay, you can call me Timbo. Uh -huh. um, I'm from Zimbabwe, by the way, and I represent the Zimbabwean Student Union. I'm the leader. It's a really, you know, a huge task, yeah. but I'm really put myself up to it. And it's been, so far, it's been, the journey's been okay. It's yeah. been interesting. I've been here for the past three years. I'm doing civil engineering. So, yeah, it's been okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. Mm, yeah. No complaints. Okay, madam, <laughs> the beautiful lady. <laughs> um, okay, so I am Patrine Hanok. Mm -hmm. I am a Namibian citizen. Mm -hmm. All the way from Namibia. Uh, I am a member of the st um, dance club here. Yeah. I'm also a member of the All Nations, no, All Christian Fellowship. Yeah. We call it ACF. <laughs> this yeah. is so bad. All yeah. Christian Fellowship Club. Yes, I got it right. Yeah, okay. So I am here. Um, I'm doing my master's in computer engineering. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, guys, yeah. so how exactly did you guys end up on this beautiful island? What was the journey? What was the story behind this all? How did you end up here, Mr. Timbo? You know, to be <laughs> honest, when I tell my friends about the journey that made me come to ALU, it's so, so amazing. Yeah. Because when I was coming here, unfortunately, my dad was the one doing all the paperwork, so uh -huh. I, I didn't know anything. So apparently, I thought I was going to another university. <laughs> so. You know, when I got to the airport, yeah. I saw the guy that was supposed to pick me up from LL, LL, from here, from this university, ELL. So, you know, apparently walked by, I was like, no, there's no my university. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like everything, a journey has its own destiny and it has its own way of just channel you in a perfect way. Yeah. Because unfortunately, I was like, I'm going to the wrong university, but for the past two years, I've been enjoying this. It's enjoying been amazing, you know. Every moment that I've been, you know, opportunities, doors have been opening. So, yeah, it's been a great journey, to be mm -hmm. honest. And the madam, I mean, okay, wait. <laughs> you come on this beautiful island. You mm -hmm. start, you know, looking around, discovering the place. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what are your favorite places here? Because, I mean, <laughs> it's such a beautiful island. What do you think? Um, yes, it is such a lovely um, island. I'm so fortunate because the weather is not very different from back home. Like, yeah. we're used to the very cold. We're used yeah. to the... Um, very hot. Yeah. The only difference is that Namibia is very dry and the island is humid. Yes. Um, so I love the um, island, so especially Lefke, because it's like a developing kind of place. It's mm -hmm. not very fast. It's such a humbling environment. Like everybody is so humble. You mm -hmm. don't really, there's no distinction between the very rich and the um, yeah. moderate or yes. the poor. It's like everybody's almost like they seem to be at the same level. So for me, that is very humbling. Mm -hmm. So you also don't have to like, um, be tempted, especially for us ladies. Like, <laughs> I love shopping. Uh, so, I like, I really, like, really absolutely. love shopping. So, I am so glad that I don't have so many opportunities on the island to spend money on, which is like really cool because then I can save. Mm -hmm. But in terms of my favorite place, I love Guinea. I haven't explored so many places, mm -hmm. but I love Guinea because um, for me, it's that kind of place where I can go and just unwind. Yeah. I love, love, love the seafood. Ooh, and I yeah, see, I see. so Guinea nothing. does it for yes, me. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, um, like when I came here on the island for the mm -hmm. first time, I was very homesick. I was, I felt like maybe, um, because there are different people now from mm -hmm. different walks of life. Everybody is different, you know, different mm -hmm. cultures. Mm -hmm. People do things very differently. Mm -hmm. How did you guys really cope with the challenges? Because I had a big challenge with being homesick. I was like, I want to go home, yeah. though the island was beautiful. What were mm -hmm. your challenges and what would you, you know? No, to be honest, yeah, that's a very, very big challenge. Yeah. Since uh, this semester, I had the opportunity at least to meet new students and mm -hmm. I have to share my views and their views and pretty much I've noticed it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of cultural difference from like where you're coming from and where we are right now. 
and the food to be honest like seriously we used to in africa you know we have like our own pub yes, you know yes. and when you come here it's so different but you'll be like okay you just with time you get used to it yes. and to a point yeah but I, I think it just needs time when you get used to it mm -hmm. you know it's like a second home to your actual home always, always. Thing, yeah. yes definitely <laughs> um for me okay my coming here was quite interesting i mean i had to transit from several a few countries yeah. and in the process i missed my flight in one of the countries Ooh, that is you know so like it was so <laughs> devastating because i didn't yeah. know if i should turn back and go home mm -hmm. or wait yeah. you know but eventually i got here and when i got here um it was later in the semester so yeah. there was no student to like welcome me at the airport i had to find my way here and yeah. it was the language because nobody spoke english or anything but it was quite an experience um in terms of being homesick not really because for me I have a mindset that wherever I am, that is home for me at the moment. So um, I already prepared myself mentally, emotionally, and everything that this is going to be home for me uh, for the next two years or so. Yeah. Um, in terms of food, yes, <laughs> that made me appreciate the food that yeah. we have at home. It's like you find yourself craving for the most weird things that you wouldn't eat at home, but yeah. then all of a sudden you're like craving for it. So the best thing, like what I had to do was... Um, Firstly, I found things that I really love. Like, I love music. Um, I love keeping my spirituality going. Mm -hmm. So then I had to, for example, I joined the dance clubs. Which is cause amazing, because I mean, yeah, I that must keeps the dance on <laughs> Yeah, because that keeps, you know, the dancer in me going. Uh -huh. um, also, I was fortunate to find really good friends who are passionate about singing. So we just get to sing around. Um, talk a lot. I basically engage most of my time doing what I love. Yeah. So in doing what I love, I am growing as a person, um, not just academically, but I am also growing as a person. So I think doing what I really love yeah. apart from school keeps me going. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Footballer, oh, how did we get all into that? Were you always a football player or did you just decide I wanted to do something different in this on this island in the university and you felt like you had to give back since you're you know the president no, mr I president <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest uh, football has been like part of my life it's like the second life that i live from my life yeah because even my mom like my dad when i was young i still remember i got my first football boots when i was like probably five years old really? and i was really you know by that time i didn't know what was football but i was good at it yeah and, you know it's a place like she was saying like you know, I feel like doing the things that you feel like you really want to do, it yeah. can just put you in a place where you're in a happy place. You just forget about all the troubles at once. You just, you know, you know you're doing the things that you were meant to do in mm -hmm. life. And it's, it gives us also, like, you know a lot of people. You know, sports, Definitely. I've been involved in sports for quite a long time in my life. And it's been something that has made me know a lot of people in life, meet new people learn a lot of different cultures and just you know be a person that grows as an you know striking a conversation when you meet someone that type of thing yes. yeah so you yeah. seem sociable you seem you like to talk to people <laughs> I, 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 swear. See you, I, see you, I, I think see you. it's the name you know my mom always told me like yeah. my name in my language means happy so all the time always people people always ask me like why is it all the time you're always smiling i'm oh, like no I, I think that's my mom's thing you're just so, like yeah, that's yeah. my character i'm like no it's it's a thing <laughs> okay so ladies and gentlemen, with the summer holidays just around the corner, people go through the most. Um, people have come through tough, you know, backgrounds and stuff. So when we're going through a loss of a person, a breakup or uh, fights with people, it's so hard ending relationships with people. It's so hard going through all of that all on your own. In your views, ladies and gentlemen, as yeah. I introduce a new topic to you guys so we can talk, because this is very interesting. Okay. I'm actually really, you know, excited about this one. That's true, huh? When you're moving on in a relationship, especially being far from home, mm -hmm. you have to cut off certain relationships with people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm so excited having a guy in studio today because we always okay. want okay. to know from the men's side, All right. how is it compared to women, why are men less affectionate when it has to be, when you have to move on to another relationship? Okay, what do okay. you think? Okay, I think, yo, you just had to put a gun on the man. Okay, it's <laughs> fine, don't worry, I'll defend the man today. Yes. I feel like, okay, with that being, okay, with the question mm -hmm. on hand, I feel like it's a two-sided affection or probably two-sided issue whereby it's not usually, I think men, we're just good in handling ourselves. Yeah. It, we do cross sometimes, but we just have a good way of showing it. So you I think cry like you no, we do, but we have our place. Okay. We have our place. Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like we just have a good way of handling mm -hmm. things. Let's say probably 
it depends on how long you guys have been invested in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for guys, it takes a long time to really, you know, put everything in one basket. Like yeah. what they say, don't put everything in, in one, one basket. basket. But yeah. So yeah. when a guy, it really takes long. So by that time, let's say probably it ends before you put everything. Yeah. So you have time to just withdraw, withdraw and you know you're okay. So I feel like guys, that's why we tend to, you know, have like an uh, advantage on that issue. Yeah. But sometimes we do get, it really gets to us whereby we really crush and really pains. But as a human being or probably as a person, sometimes you just need to just, you know, look for ways or means just to at least to just maneuver yourself out of yeah. the situation and get to a happy place. And now, Miss uh -huh. Petrina, <laughs> I have this very interesting question for you on the mm -hmm. ladies' side. Okay. Ladies can be very emotional beings. We can cry ourselves to sleep every uh -huh. day if we have to. Mm -hmm. Do you have a time frame for people to actually get over breakups, get over divorce, even get over um, a loved one passing on? How do you feel about that? Do you give them a certain time span or do you feel like it should just... You should just go in the flow with it, get over it when you do. What's your take on that? Um, for me, I won't actually put a time span to it yeah. because everybody deals with um, emotions differently. Yeah. And, um, whew, okay, you mentioned three different scenarios. Yeah. Okay, in terms of relationships, um, I love reading and listening to um, Mike Murdoch. Okay. And one of the things he said is, whatever door you're closing, make sure that you close it gently because you never know when you have to open that door again. Yeah. So in terms of that, um, that is something that I really uh, put in practice in my life that whatever door I have to close, on my side, even if it's not for the benefit of the other person, on my side, I'd rather close it gently. Meaning, yeah. um, you know, I'm in peace with you, whether you're in peace with me or not. But it's for my good. own sound mind, yeah. you know, that I can actually wake up and not feel bad or whatever even if you even if i'm the victim but mm -hmm. i do it for my own peace of mind okay. so um and then in terms of like a loss like when you've lost somebody you know yeah. you can never really um i mean it's not something that you wake up and it's not there yeah. you know of course there'll be times when you go to sleep and you're yeah, like i wish this is just a long dream i can but it's just <laughs> there so for me talking about it um Helps. Being, helps mm. you know being able to have close people that you can actually be open about it if you want to cry you cry whatever you do you just you do, do, do you okay so i mean we can we can ask you guys a lot of questions about moving on but yeah. have you guys experienced either heartbreak have you experienced anything where you had to move on yeah. what is your advice for somebody right now who's probably watching who's in the university feeling like i have to move on i have to cut my ties and some relationships from people who are back home mm -hmm. how and what would you say to them like what advice would you give them okay mm -hmm. i think the best advice that i'll give people is like just make smart investment yeah probably talking on a business term like just don't invest in a two dollar let's just say a two dollar business <laughs> and you you know that type of yeah but at least try to understand or probably know what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. before you, okay, you dip yourself into. Because for me, usually, let's say, I know a, a good example, we are at the sea. Mm -hmm. Before, you test the waters with the leg. You don't test oh with the head. head. <laughs> so I feel like that's okay. the type of thing. At least just know what you're getting yourself to. Yeah. And I feel like be out there. Get, okay, try to do mistakes. Mm -hmm. You learn, we learn from our mistakes. And when you do a mistake, wake up, get up. And, and just move on from mm. their mistake. Do, yeah. you, do you have anything you want to add on to that? Um, I see you nodding your head <laughs> and you're like... <laughs> okay, his um, tactic, if I should put it that way, is really, really interesting. Uh -huh. On my side is um, once I actually see that, okay, this is worth investing in, yeah. I'd rather give my all to it because, you know, you're talking about business, so I'm going to take you into business. <laughs> when you talk about investments, okay. of course, you are promised that this yeah, is what you could benefit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you take the money and you put it in, like... You give it all, yes. no, yeah, and it's, it's a risk. So for me, it's the same thing. Like, if I have to deprive myself um, of, you know, what I could be to that person, I feel like I'm being unfair. So I give myself, you know, whether it's friends or family or um, loved ones or whatnot, I yeah. give my all. So when I have to, like, move away, for me, it's, okay, cool. That was, like, a wrong turn, maybe. Yeah, but, but, yeah, you get growth in it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Okay, so for me, personally, I feel like, 
it's so much better having a friend with you when you're moving on rather than a family member. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, mm. because having a family member, mm. you could have had a breakup today. They'll still remind you 10 years from today. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so nice. I prefer <laughs> having my friends over my family. Mm -hmm. What is your take on it? And why do you think it happens mostly where people prefer friends over family? For guys, mm -hmm. for guys, I feel like even having anyone mm -hmm. is a problem. <laughs> because for guys, I feel like we just do, we try to put everything internal to so a point whereby, because for guys, if you put yourself out there, yes. in a way you put yourself like you're vulnerable to the world and yes. it shows the weakness. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we just try to keep everything internal, even if, no matter how hard it is, but yeah. we just try to keep it inside us. So that it's just, you know, it's just you, you stay as a man. Yeah, <laughs> I got you. And you, what do you think um, about that? For me, I think, it depends. Like, mm -hmm. if you're really, really close to your family, then you would deal close that, you, you know, with that better with your family. But uh, in essence, it's just who you have around you that is really close to you and that knows you to a point that you can just pour out yourself to that person, you know. Um, so, yeah, but in my case, I think I handle it better on my own. Actually, yeah. in my own space, because I can cry, I can do whatever on my own and not in the presence of people. Okay, for the very last questions, do you guys find it weird when people move on with, with other people, actually? Let, let me say, you, you are in a scenario where um, you break up with somebody and you use somebody else to move on with your breakup. Do you I think that's wise? I feel like that's unfair to the other party that you're moving on to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least sort up your issues and finish. Then, you know, when you're moving on, you're moving on. On a clean plot, on a clean plot path, mm -hmm. and just it's on a clean sheet, like you're just perfect. You you're ready for a new relationship. Okay, and just the last remarks. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give somebody who's really going through the most, the most, the most, and wants to move on? Just one advice. <clears throat> for me, is look for something that you really love and invest your time and energy in that thing that you're passionate about. Okay. Because when you redirect your passion to that thing that you're passionate about, which should be good, by the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> like maybe your career or something, yeah. it, it's going to just push everything else aside and everything yeah. will be fine. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen for tuning in. I hope you guys will come back for another segment of Rainbow Colors, Let's Talk Obviously. And until next time, please stay tuned.